But what I'm working on here is an F22. You'll find these in your uh, Accords, your Odysseys. This is a 1997 2.2 liter F22. And I have a very, 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 very weird thing that happened to this vehicle. So, picked this up from a buddy for dirt cheap because, uh, see, his mother-in-law had this vehicle out in Palm Springs for most of its life. Then she gave it to the granddaughter. The granddaughter drove it around for a couple weeks and then all of a sudden it failed. I went and checked it out. Uh, sounded like a timing belt. Sounded like a timing belt had snapped. So I got in there, started, uh, got all the parts for the timing belt, and um, this is what I discovered. That is part of the camshaft with the gear that the time belt that the time belt goes around. You can see it snapped in half. But let me show you where the uh, camshaft rides on. That's very pretty. Here on the driver's side of the vehicle, you can see right there, right in the center, that's where the uh, camshaft actually snapped. It was really weird. Heard it, bought the vehicle, thought it was a simple timing belt. Get the valve cover off, starting to take stuff apart, and um, I just wanted to double check it. So I popped the uh, top timing belt cover off, and uh, I'm like, why isn't this belt snapped? And then I had somebody come out here help me start the vehicle, and uh, the uh, that cam gear, that gear is actually moving. No, it's actually, yeah, that the gear is actually moving and the belt is too, but the cams aren't. And I'm like, what the heck is going on here? So then, um, pop the cover off and the, <laughs> the gear right there just falls out. Either this vehicle was starved of oil and uh, didn't get up to the top end and I have lower bearing damage as well, or it's just a, a fluke, you know, maybe a, a machining mistake or um, I actually sent an oil sample off to Blackstone Labs. I'll put up the results of it right now. And uh, they said there's not a whole lot of, um, there's not a lot of uh, metal in it like you would see with a lower bearing failure. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop this head off, find another one in a junkyard, have that milled out and um, see if I can get this thing up, back up and running. I'm also going to do the uh, oil pan gasket. I want to see what, if I can see the uh, bearings from below. This is the oil pan gasket that I've gotten to replace it. OS 30632T Felpro for those of you who cannot read. But what I like about these gaskets is actually embedded with metal right here. So this is a very robust gasket. It comes with everything you need. These are little clips that you use to hold up the uh, gasket while you're installing it. And it comes with a little uh, can of... Uh, RTV, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what I use on all vehicles when I need RTV. Be that a Honda, a Toyota, a Chrysler, a Ford, it doesn't matter. I always uh, stick with uh, stick with the FIPG, a form in place gasket by Toyota. Let's take a look at the gasket itself. Oh, very nice. Stays in place. Like I said, there's a piece of metal in here that's sandwiched. Almost like a multi-layer steel head gasket. You actually see it right there. You guys see that? So when I actually install it, I'll put some silicone here, the point here, here, on this little ridge right here, top and bottom, and then right here as well, top and bottom. Very nice. There's the oil pan covered in nasty oil. There's actually a brace I had to take off right there. Three bolts up here, two back there. But first you have to get the uh, exhaust, part of the exhaust off, which I did right there. Don't make the mistake that I did and rip out the wires for your uh, O2 sensor. I ripped them out right there. I should have taken that O2 sensor off before I started unbolting this, but I was getting anxious, antsy pantsy. You have a bracket right there that actually the exhaust hangs onto. And then the connector for that O2 is somewhere up there. I'll have to fix that. I actually put the bolts back in right there for the uh, for this bar. And now you just have a whole bunch of little 10 millimeters. Looks like there's a stud here and bolts around here. I'll pop that off, clean all this up. And then uh, take a look at the bearings.
right here, I'm just taking all the bolts off and nuts off for the uh, oil pan. Once I get that off, I just get a stubby uh, screwdriver and I put that between the engine block and the uh, oil pan and just uh, rotate a little bit and the oil pan should drop down. Uh, once it drops down, you're gonna wanna grab it. It might get stuck where the transmission, uh, on the transmission side. So uh, just pull it down and push it towards the uh, driver's side a little bit and uh, you should be able to get it free and clear. Um, just get some oil out of there. So right here, once I have a clear shot to the rod bearings, I just grab the lower end of the rod and I'm just trying to move them. I just grab all four of them one by one and check for play or any kind of you know movement inside of there. I didn't see any, or I, didn't, I should say I didn't feel any movement. So that's good news. I don't think the uh, rod bearings are shot. I don't think this thing was starved of oil. So that's an awesome sign. So I have the oil pan off and um, I'm gonna make this into a series guys of me rebuilding this 2.2 uh, liter. Uh, I didn't find anything like any huge chunks down the uh, oil pan and the oil. Um, what you can see are some silver specks of aluminum, but uh, that's probably from where the uh, cam was grinding on the journal. Just caused aluminum shavings, a little bit of aluminum shavings to come off, but nothing that I'm really gonna worry about. I don't know if you can see it in there or not. It's too reflective. But there's nothing major in there. You can see it there. But uh, I checked the uh, rod bearings and those are good and tight. So I'm happy about that. I don't think there is any lower bearing damage done on this engine. Because, uh, you know, doing a little bit more uh, thinking about it. Uh, either it was starved of oil and that's why the top end, um, that's why the cam broke. But if the top end starved of oil, uh, more than likely the bottom end would have starved for, starved for oil, but I'm not seeing that here. I could be wrong, but I'm not seeing that here. Or somebody put a new timing belt on there and made the timing belt way too tight and uh, caused the uh, camshaft to uh, break like that. So the next video, we'll go over into cleaning this up. I'm going to clean all this gunk up and put the new um, oil pan gasket on. If you guys can, please subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos that are about to come out. Uh, like I said, I'll put uh, a link to the next one at the end of the video once I get it up. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm liking what I see here. I think everything's good. I got to go in search of a head now and uh, clean this oil pan up.